2016. The time is 7 p.m. and the regular meeting of the Greensburg Board of Zoning Appeals is called to order. Would y'all rise, face the flag, and recite the vote? <coughs> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chris, are you going to take the scores or something since John's not here? Yes. Okay, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Pockover? Here. Raymer here. Rich Richardson? Yes. Nate uh, Lease? Here. Roy Present. Thank you, Chris. I didn't get to talk to you about it before. Okay, sorry. Okay, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from the August 16th, 2016 meeting. I think, were there some corrections to that, Ron? Those. Uh, items that I had submitted to you earlier and given you a copy tonight that are marked in red were comments that I had to the minute suggested revisions. Did everybody get a chance to look at those? And if there's no further additions or corrections, I'd entertain a motion that we approve them as they are correct on the sheet in front of you. Okay, I'll make a motion. I have a second. Thank you, Bruce. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> Hearing none, they stand approved. That brings us to new business. Shelley Knoll is requesting a permanent variance at 211 West 1st Street, Greensburg, Indiana, as allowed by the City of Greensburg Code of Ordinances 155.242B2. The permanent variance involves the addition of up to a 500 square foot carport on an existing accessory building garage which has an area of 432 square feet resulting in a total of area of up to 932 square feet which is in excess of the maximum area of 720 square feet <coughs> permitted by the city of greensburg zoning ordinance sections 155.017 a1 and 155.020c also included is a variance to permit the encroachment of the addition of the carport into the required 10 foot wide side yard and required 10 foot wide rear yard as required by the city of greensburg zoning ordinances section 155.020c the resultant side yard for the accessory building would have a side yard with a one foot in a rear yard setback of zero feet. The property is located on the south side of First Street between Home Street and Fort Street. There is an alleyway behind the property and the existing garage here and then an open area to the west side of that garage. This is a site plan the petitioner provided uh, showing the garage in some of their walkways. This is actually a ramp right here, and this is a uh, gravel uh, parking area to the west of the existing garage. This particular site plan seems to indicate that there could be 12 foot between the alley and the rear of the garage, but when you look on Beacon, it appears that the property line is much near the back of the garage. To my knowledge, no actual survey has been done, but I think that it's reasonable to believe that the alley has wandered off to the south a bit. It may not be centered up in the platted portion of the alley. The petitioner is asking for, this is the existing garage here, and this is a view from the alley um, slightly to the west and looking down, and this would be the addition of the carport that is anticipated if this variant should be granted. And this is a picture of the back looking from the alley towards the house. And again, the gravel area is right here. It's defined by the garage on the west, the fence on the north, and the hedge, I'm sorry, the hedges on the west and the garage is on the east. Hey, 
Uh, I think back to that last picture, did it say it was 19 by 36 cardboard in the garage? I'm, I'll go one more. Can you go? The garage is reported to be 24 feet, right? Yes. And, there, and the cardboard is going to be 36 feet, 19 by 36, the box side. Can you go back? Oh, it just says gravel parking area. Yeah. Okay. And the 36 foot dimension is the long way here. Yeah. But do you think you think that's less than that? I think the alley is much closer to the property line along the side of the alley is much closer to the garage than 12 feet. I can't assert that, but that's my belief. <coughs> And finally, we have a picture standing in the yard looking to the south, and their garage is the one we see on the left here, <coughs> and the neighbor's garage is <coughs> to the right. Uh, the rear of the property, as you can tell, is slightly elevated from the yard, and this is a ramp that goes up to it, and they have some steps over here. All right. Questions? Board members from around? Yes, there's the hedge. Uh, actually owns the hedge. Fine. Again, we don't have a survey, so I cannot tell you where the property line is, but I'm told the hedge belongs to the neighbor. And uh, we have some people here that can probably help to clarify that. So, if we're going to have a one foot Rear yard setback is zero. Zero rear yard. Rear yard zero feet. Zero to the back property yeah. line. And so that means that fence. garage is right at the back property line. Okay. I suspect that to be correct. I can't have a suit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for Rob? If not, is anyone here from the audience to speak on this petition? You come forward, sir, and state your name for the record. <coughs> My name is uh, Larry Hadler. I'm the adjoining neighbor on the west side. Um, you should have an email that I sent to Ron. He said that he distributed that to you. Um, part of my, uh, one of the things I want to say is that, to start with, is that I like my name. They've done a nice job on that people their property, and I suspect that some of the things that Gary and I have talked about that he would honor and come true. And he's for 30, 30 some years. I've, I've been the one that's done the upkeep on the edge. I'm the guy that planted it. Uh, originally, there was a fence down through there. It was one of those old, old dilapidated fence where the kids had walked over the top of it, and I planted the edge 16 inches to the inside of that. Over that time period, I've cut the hedge to the ground several times since they come back, so it's white. You know, it's probably encroaching on their side of the property line. So when you look down through there, um, what you see is not necessarily a true statement of where the, the property line is. Based on what I remember from when I built my garage, um, the property line is somewhere between the two homes, and it's 10 feet <coughs> five feet down the center and it's approximately down through that area which is pretty close in line with that telephone board that you see there. Um, part of my worries with this project first of all was with the property line putting the uh, carport that close uh, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to get, we'll have to cut some of the edge down and then if uh, Gary that Shelly should move, then it's back to me to maintain. This is a 12 inch square. This is how close I would be trying to maintain this. I'm pretty confident that at some point, um, carports, car 
reports get closed in, or they find out that as people who let her off, and maybe it's something as simple as a public person in the But when you're that close, trying to do a job, it's pretty difficult. If I go to clean the gutters, I don't think I can get a ladder in that area to clean the gutters. I don't think I can. A step ladder is wired to that. If it's a, uh, an extended ladder, the only people who have one place, and that's like my side. And so, so you, you're saying if they have to clean gutters, right? Yes. Yeah, I have no gutters on that side. My gable room is. Yeah, well, you kept saying if I have to clean I'm sorry. Well, I may. <laughs> you know, but. Um, so some of that main, the maintenance issue is one of my big, big concerns with all this. Uh, and that was the first thing that I looked at. And then after I kind of got a feel for that, I, I started to think about the encroachment. And as I looked down the alley at the encroachment, I don't see any other structures down through that close. In fact, I walked that alley today. There's 35 structures down the closest one, as I can tell, and mind you, I agree with what Ron said earlier. I don't know exactly where the alley begins and ends. Normally, you measure from the center back. Um, but I kind of went and used the, just a side of here's the grass, here's the gravel, and gave it a bit to the doubt. The nearest uh, structure down through there is three feet, and there's two or three of them. The farthest away is 37 feet. There's 35 structures down through there. Um, most of the ones that are really close just have sliding doors. They're just access doors to where somebody can pull up in a car, get their items out, slide the door open, go in, unload them, put the back slide shut. The ones that get a little bit closer or a little farther back, there are some overhead doors down through there and such. My garage, when I built it, it has a 20 foot approach. Um, and I, I applied for a variance too. I applied and I got a five foot variance to keep it in line with the house. I still have a work area down on the side. If I need to put siding up, if I want to modify it, change it, do whatever, I did that. So, um, I don't know uh, how it's viewed by the board today, I'll be interested to see. Uh, because when I look at it, ordinances are in place to protect people today, and ordinances are in place to protect people on down the road. And I'm looking out not just for me, but for people on down the road. When I look at uh, that encroachment area that they talked about, the alley is about somewhere between 9 and 11 feet wide. Most vehicles today are 20 feet, between 16 and 20 of them, but the average is somewhere around 20. When you start backing in or pulling in, a portion of that vehicle comes out over the, into the other side of the alley. Currently, my neighbors, that, because it's easier, they pull in the, the guy's yard across from them and back in. If he would have to put a fence up, that'd be done. They couldn't get in that way, and it'd be pretty difficult for them because that encroachment's only a foot as they want to suggest it to be. So that's that's kind of the way I look at it. So I don't know what else you want to hear from me. Any questions? <coughs> As I said before, I've cut it clear to the ground. I let it grow up. It's pretty good privacy. Normally, I trim it about once a month. Gary, he likes to trim it as he mows. He'll get the hedge trimmer out. He'll go. It runs. It looks nice. You know, if I got time, I would do that. I got. I do a lot of other things as well. Um, I trim it off the step. I, right now, 
it's up high enough I don't have to get on a step ladder. Um, I use a couple of recycling bins, <laughs> and I've got an extended walk board that I sit on top of them, and when I stand up on them, I'm about this tall. So I can, I can measure it across here as I go through to keep it even. Previously, um, the property that Shelly owns was owned by another gentleman. He built uh, some monkey bars for his kids. Nice job my kids were going to. They, they both played on it. And then uh, what he decided <coughs> that he wanted to go all out, and he built a 8x8x8 uh, eight by eight by eight playhouse on top of it. When he did that, it hung over and it was right in line with that hedge on there. So at that time, I, because her property sits down lower on that side, I have to use a step ladder down through there. And I had the step ladder up, I had the wall board between them. And to get along that <coughs> hedge where I was, I had to kind of lean out this direction because if the hedge came up and the building went out up and right along the top of what I did. One of the ladder, ladders kicked out and I threw the hedge trimmer and I <coughs> walked up my arm back and when I did I broke my hands. So that's, a, that's kind of my background for me you know, on a long board. Then. Yes. Oh, is that, I'm sorry for that. Yes, that's, uh, that's all over. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else from the audience to speak on this petition? Yeah. <clears throat> Identify yourself, please. My name's Gary Warfield. I, uh, I'm Shelly. Shelly's my girlfriend. I've been uh, together quite a while, uh, many years, and I've lived at this address for a couple of years now. Um, I would like to address a couple of things. Um, I think maybe you had some questions about the property line, and from the, the GIS. Uh, site on the, on the county map, and uh, Ron's right, we did not get a survey on this, but according to that map, it would show on the east side and the south side of the garage is where the property lines are, and I can only assume that when that garage or shed was built years and years ago, probably 40 or 50 years ago at least, it was built in that back corner of the property. Um, it's 18 foot wide. What we're looking to build is just uh, carport that would be 19 by 23. Um, so with the 18 foot of the garage and the 19 foot of the, of the carport, it would be 37 foot. Uh, the property's 40 foot wide. That would give us three foot on uh, Mr. Hadler's side. Uh, we asked for a one foot variance uh, on that side. That was uh, uh, an overestimation, if you would. We wanted to ask for more than we will probably use. I certainly wouldn't, uh, and I don't plan on going close to 12 inches because I'm afraid we'd be right back here in uh, some type of civil action if it was even close. Uh, so it would not be that close, just like the square footage is actually not, um, it's probably 100 foot smaller than was uh, requested in the variance. Um, we will be going over the uh, allowable current or, uh, square footage, but <coughs> we overestimated on that also, Mr. Richardson. I don't know if that may be clarified. Yeah. Okay. Um, and to address a couple things uh, that came up, um, I think everybody's concerned about any uh, future neighbors that would come in that wouldn't upkeep uh, their properties. I am, uh, you know, and I'm sure if I moved to another area that people would be worried about me. Um, I certainly uh, appreciate Mr. Hadler's uh, concerns, um, but I don't feel like we should be penalized for uh, any potential misfallings or uh, landscaping deficiencies of any future owners, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, the design of the uh, carport that we're going to uh, request to put up um, on that west side along the, the hedgerow of the bush, and keep in mind probably that, that that hedge is currently probably four to five foot wide at various points, and it's probably a good foot and a half onto uh, on the other side of the property. Um, it's going to be an open design carport. Um, I don't see any issues. Uh, you know, you would have to navigate around uh, four or five posts, but um, 
I just personally don't see an issue with the uh, landscaping. The, the opening will be 10 foot high. Currently, the, uh, the, the hedge might be six foot tall. Um, so there will be plenty of room to, uh, to do any type of uh, landscape work. So um, with that, uh, we'd just like to uh, thank you for your time and uh, any considerations that we get. Thank you very much. Any questions from board members? There going to be any overhang from the post? I'm sorry? Any overhang? Right, there, the there will be. We'll, uh, and I'm glad you brought that up. We, uh, we will have uh, an overhang, and it'll be, uh, as far as that, um, probably two to the two and a half foot that we're going to cushion that we'll have to the property line, that'll be factored in there. So if we've got to put the post, uh, you know, two feet out into the current parking area, that's what we'll do. Um, there will be an overhang. It will be guttered. Uh, the description or the depiction uh, that the uh, uh, construction company provided showed the gables open. Uh, they'll be closed off. It'll be asphalt roofed. Um, I'll use uh, high quality stain, just like the stained uh, the, the wood that you see there and then the large deck on the house. Um, in our humble opinion, it'll, it'll be a quality structure. Will be a concrete floor in it? You know, um, it's funny you mention that because that crossed my mind today. Uh, when we build it, no, it won't. We'll leave it gravel. Uh, we might entertain that down the road, but right now that's that's not what we're uh, going for. Any further questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience to speak? I have a question. Yes, sir. Right now, I know what we came here for. And I know what the footage was, but I don't know now after hearing all that. So how, how do you make a decision based on <coughs> something that none of us in this room have currently know what that width is? Well, the decision will be based on the square footage as he requested in his variance request. Okay, if it's so smaller it's than that, the foot, right. one foot, okay, right. that's what it will be based on. I was going to perhaps clarify something that Anchorage was, was getting after. Our ordinance says that the yard setback is measured from the property line to the foundation. So the setback requirements, in this case, I would interpret the foundation to be column coming down supporting the roof. So if there's an overhang beyond that, that is beyond the scope of our setback requirements in our ordinance. Does that make sense? Yes, so he can can leave a building out there 10 foot. Yes. And be legal. Yes. Then they are your air rights at some point. But. <laughs> <laughs> and for what it's worth, that's not going to happen. All right. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Yeah, I got some comments. Go ahead. Uh, the main reason I believe for the setbacks are for access for emergency uh, people. We can't get vehicles in there, but we can get emergency people in there. And if we've got, I, I assume it's going to be for storage or for picnics or for whatever that's going to be items placed in their way and who knows what's going to be put in there. But if somebody has to come through there and access <coughs> that, it will be tough to do. I think I'm all in favor of keeping our minimum setbacks as where they need to be. Unless, unless there's a, a good a good quality reason to keep ourselves. Any other comments, concerns, questions? <coughs> if not, I would entertain a motion that we approve this request. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve this with the contingency that the cardboard is granted that it will never be enclosed and it will always remain in the cardboard.
I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll see Steve second me. Chris, would you call the roll, please? Rich? No. David? No. Bruce? No. Steve? No. Roll. No. Item number two, moving along. Michael Wessel is requesting a permanent variance at 406 North Broadway Street, Greensburg, Indiana, as allowed by the City of Greensburg Code of Ordinance Section 155.242B2. The permanent variance involves erecting a privacy fence in a front yard with a height of up to 72 inches, which is in excess of the maximum height of 48 inches permitted in a front yard by the City of Greensburg Code of Ordinance as Section 155.100. The property in question is located on the northeast corner of the intersection of Broadway Street and Central Avenue. Because the property has two free street frontages, it has two front yards. One along the Central Avenue side and one along the Broadway side. Uh, in general, and I'll give a little more detail here, but he's requesting a fence around this part of his yard. Um, I do note that there is one residence here that faces central and then these over here face central. None of these in the block that this property is in faces central as these two do not face central but there is some down here that face central. So in the immediate area, even though it's a front yard by the ordinance, it's not used by any of the adjoining neighbors as well. The request is to construct a fence starting at this corner of the house, coming down to the sidewalk, sidewalk, going across with a gate over his driveway and back up the alley and back across his property line to the rear of his house. City ordinance does not prohibit <coughs> fences in the side yards, so the fence can be constructed in any of the required yards. The constraint in our ordinance is that a front yard can have a fence can taller than 48 inches and this is a front yard. Uh, one thing I would like to point out, I believe probably this white line represents the property line and if it does under any circumstance the fence would not be permitted beyond that line but that's kind of a fine tuning thing. Um, in this particular area Central Avenue is one way westbound so traffic should only be approaching from the east, meaning that any side obstruction that such a fence might cause for someone exiting his driveway or the alley or another neighbor's driveway right here should not be an issue about traffic approaching from the west that would have a side obstruction. However, this is a public sidewalk and it's reasonable to believe that pedestrians could travel either way on that sidewalk and someone pulling out of the driveway or the alley or even the neighbor's driveway, maybe not as much, uh, there could be, especially a child, that comes walking down through there and could appear pretty suddenly without much warning to the neighbors. Um, if you decide, well, let me add one other feature. If you're familiar with this particular site, there is an embankment along Central Street here that is relatively steep. Um, if you should decide to approve this variance, it would be my recommendation that you hold the fence back some distance from the sidewalk, and the number I picked out was 10 feet, so that a vehicle exiting the driveway and or the alley would have a chance to see a pedestrian coming up the way before they got into the sidewalk. Those vehicles would should be traveling at very low speeds, either in the alley or in the driveway, but do want the motorist and the pedestrian to have a safe chance to travel through that area. Thank you. My main concern in viewing this myself was having raising my grandchildren now 
my grandson, even though we don't live near there, they walk up and down Central Street a lot going to the junior high school. Uh, it's very heavily traveled in the morning and at late afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I personally think that that fence can't be that tall and come out toward that sidewalk that far. Because there's just, there's a lot of kids. You know, and, I, and I'm sure there's other people at other times of the day, but I know they travel that in the morning and in the afternoon heavily. That concerned me when I first went there. So I'm just speaking fun. Anybody else have any concerns or questions about this? Yeah, I've got I got some things. I want that that lot that elevation change from the sidewalk. I don't know, it's it's probably not more than ten or twelve foot back from the sidewalk. It changes in elevation from four feet up to five feet. So if we go, if, if you put a four foot fence up on top of that elevation change, you're nine foot above the size. Yeah, I understand wouldn't be as much square footage, as much area inside it, but he wouldn't need a variance at all. He could put a four foot fence in there and still have his privacy. Any other comments or questions? Well, I, I'll Hold on just a second. Uh, I'll, I'll let you go first, Bruce, okay. and then I'll ask for questions from the audience. Okay. The, the fence on the north side of the property, uh, when driving through the alley, I noticed there's a gate attached to uh, the adjoining property. Now, do they, show, do they share the maintenance on that fence, or whose property does it actually defense? Why? Why? We'll have to get an answer to that. I don't know yeah. the answer to so. That's, that's kind of what I was looking at when I go through there. All right, now I'll open it up to questions from the audience. So go ahead if you come forward and state your name for the record, please. Hello, uh, my name is Michael Russell. Uh, my wife and I just purchased this house uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, so we're moving in there with our kids. Um, the reason I wanted to, to build a privacy fence was because of our children and our beds. So. Um, and it makes perfect sense to me about not having that close to the, the sidewalk because of people going through. So I agree that makes sense to, to pull it back uh, at least 10 feet from the sidewalk. That's a good thought that I had not had before. Um, but uh, we just wanted to have a, a privacy fence there for our, our children so they could play out back. I wanted to have a, potentially have a gate across the driveway so they could you know, ride their bikes on the driveway without risk of going out on the road, that sort of thing. Um, that was our, our uh, hope with the building fence here. Having the two, two front yards just going straight across from the house to the garage to the whole lot space. So I just wanted to fence a little bit larger area with the privacy fence if I could. Um, as far as the back fence, I honestly don't know yet who um, has maintained that in the past since we just bought the house. We don't have to. Are, are you still um, wanting a six foot fence? I don't even know it's going to be back and up on top of that hill fence. Um, down toward the garage end, it, it doesn't rise quite as quickly, um, so I would like to stick with the six-inch fence. Um, near the garage, it's it's only a foot or two higher than the sidewalk. Um, we should go back a little bit there, maybe two feet up. So um, I would have preferred to have the uh, the six-foot. We have a couple of dogs too. I like to have a taller fence to make sure we keep them in the yard too. If they're outside. So. <coughs> Anybody else have any questions? Oh, since it's a vinyl, chain link, uh, uh, vinyl, vinyl or uh, stained wood is what I put in the plus. Any other questions? Any other comments from people here, audience members? Any other questions from board members of Michael? Okay, thank you, sir. There's no other comments or questions. <coughs> Ron, do you have something else you want to say? Okay, I'd entertain the motion that we approve this request. Personally, I'd like to see the caveat that it be placed 10 foot back from the sidewalk. But whoever makes the motion, that's up to them. I'll make the motion that uh, we take Ron's suggestion that we would place back 10 foot away from the sidewalk for uh, public safety. I think that motion 
if you get that, Chris? Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? Steve, second. When you're done, Chris, would you call the roll, please? Rich? No. David? Yes. Bruce? No. Steve? Yes. Roy? Yes. Ten foot back. Here we go. Moving along, report from the zoning administrator. Really don't have much. Have had a couple of inquiries regarding potential meeting next month, but no formal petitions yet. Um, and probably right now, do it about 50 50 that we'll have a meeting next month. Uh, other than that, it's been relatively quiet. It's my right. business. What In, any other items of interest to board members? If not, I'd entertain a motion we adjourn. I'll take motion we adjourn. Done.